inductive types. So we not just have inductive types, but also inductive inductive types and even quotient inductive inductive types. So please. Okay, so, so this is a jo joint work by Ambush Kaposhi and Thorsten Altenkirs. And I'm Andras Kovac. I'm going to talk about constructing uh, quotient inductive inductive times. So first, let's give a bit of an introduction and motivation. So quotient inductive inductive types, a more general notion of uh, the inductive types familiar from proof assistants uh, such as Koch and Agda. And, uh, and the motivation is that QITs could be useful for formalizing lots of mathematics and including the meta theory of various logics and type theories. And it really starts to shine when we get to dependent type theories. So this, this could be a tool for formalizing dependent type theory. And in relation to the talk in the morning, where there was uh, some discussion about the brand indices and names. So this approach could be, could be viewed as kind of the scaling up of intrinsic the brand indices all the way to dependent type theory. So we aim to be at the background theory for these QITs, but then eventually we would like to do some practical implementations because current proof systems do not support uh, these QITs. And, and yes, we really believe that the mechanized method theory of type theories could be made much more convenient. And these QITs are one key feature, but not the only feature. So there are a lot of more technical challenges. And there are also some intrinsic mathematical value in the study of QITs. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about this one, but there are some connections to universal algebra and also like the study of models of type theories in general. Okay, so let's see one example for QIIT. And this is going to be, this is a fragment of a well type syntax of type theory quotiented by beta eta conversion. So here we have a con, con is the set of contexts and tie is a context index set of set. So every type already lives in some, some context. And terms uh, are indexed by context and types. And so there is no notion of preterms or there is no notion of terms which are not already well typed. And then we list, list basically like all the constructions in the syntax of type theory starting from the empty context and then the context extension. And then we are skipping a lot of stuff, but I included here uh, like booleans and the pi type formation rule. And then also some equations at the bottom, which are the beta rules for, uh, for the eliminator for the boolean. And then it says that we can reduce to some branch if we get true, and then we reduce to some other branch if, if we get a false. But there are much more equations if we consider a full type theory, and we need, also need to consider uh, all of the substitution and weakening equations as well. So, but in contrast, the conversion and way would be to define conversion as a family of uh, inductive relations on preterms. But then there are two main problems. One problem is that we need to explicitly specify that everything inside the syntax is a congruence. The other problem is, is that we need lots and lots of proofs in the meta theory that the, that the meta theoretical constructions also respect this conversion relation. And sometimes this state of affairs is called satellite hell. And I, I use the red color to make, uh, make it more suggestive. And uh, but the, so the other way, with the QIIT definition, equations are automatically respected by everything. So no need to worry. If we just take a random function, then it's a congruence with respect to conversion. And we automatically get this congruence closure in the syntax. So we cut down dozens and dozens of rules in the syntax. And everything is well type, including equations. So type preservation becomes a trivial property, which is actually not even expressible. Because basically, it's something like if you are working on the syntax of abstract syntax trees, then you are not able to talk about tokens. In this situation, you are not able to talk about type preservation, because you are working at a higher level of abstraction. So is this heaven? But unfortunately, no, because there are lots of circles of hell we still need to escape from. And this is just the lowest circle of hell. But that, those are left for future work. And like one notable hell is this transport hell. And these transports and coercions proliferate beyond uh, measure. So, so what are the key, key questions? So one question is, what is a valid QIIT signature? 
And in an actual implementation, we would actually like to be able to write a QIT signature checker in a proof assistant. So we need to make this, this very precise. And so for semantics, so can we build these categories of algebras for QITs? And what is the induction principle? And what are the computation rules? And how can we relate induction recursion? So these are questions of semantics. And there's also construction. So, but do these QIITs or their initial algebras actually exist? And how can we construct them and from what building blocks? And so this relates to the question, so this also relates to the question that if you have a type theory and we just add these QIITs, then do we actually have a consistent theory? And so this actually, this would also answer this question. So our contribution is giving answers to all of these questions. Okay, so let's talk about the syntax. Uh, so we have seen that if we do this intrinsically typed QIIT definition of type theory, then everything can de depend on everything. So equations can depend on constructors, and uh, basically that there is no limitation. Uh, with regards to what, what can depend on what. So then the natural choice is to have a domain-specific dependent type theory for <laughs> describing the valid signatures. And this is related to Cartman's generalized algebraic theories, but then there, there are significant differences between the Cartman's approach and our approach, and we are like uh, kind of going in a very different uh, research directions. And so we call this theory the theory of signatures, and every gamma typing context in the theory is is basically a valid QIIT signature. So for example, we can write down a signature for natural numbers by just listing a bunch of types in this dependent typing context, and then saying that first we have nat, which is in the universe, so it's a type constructor, and then we have zero, which is in, in nat, or EL of nat, technically, because we need some uh, uh, decoding or construction for, for codes in the universe, and then we also have a function successor. And so in this talk, I, I focus on closed QIITs, which don't refer to ex external types. So an open QIIT would be something like a list of some elements, such that the element type is, comes from the meta theory. So the theory of signatures is formally a category with families extended with some structure, but here I just list some conventional typing rules. So in particular, we have a universe, and we have an EL for the universe, but the universe is completely empty. There is nothing, nothing in there. So, but, but, but why, are, why is this useful? So this is useful because in a typing contest, we can list variables which are in the universe and thereby introducing some type constructors. And we also have a function space. And uh, the interesting feature of the function space is that the domain is in the universe, but the codomain is not in the universe. And this is basically, this enforces the strict positivity because we can get a function to the left side of a function arrow. So you can weave it as kind of a strictly positive dependent type theory, which is a very minimal type theory. And then we have an example on the bottom for a slightly more complicated signature. And then we have context and types and empty context, context extension. And this is a bit more interesting because it's already inductive inductive. So, but we also need these equality constructors. So we add this equality type formation rule to the syntax. And we also have this rule that we can only build an equality type of things which are in some universe, which are like, like small types. And, uh, and this basically, this rules out the iteration of equality types. So because we are only working with quotients, we don't need to talk about a higher higher iterated equalities. We also have equality reflection, which is, in, which is going to be important later, but I am not elaborating on that. So then we also have a signature with an equation. Like, so this is a signature for a quotient interval when we have uh, two constructors and an equation between the two constructors. Okay, so let's talk about semantics. And uh, so for each signature, we need a category where objects are algebras and morphisms are homomorphisms. And uh, for example, for natural numbers, an algebra is just a set together with an element, then and a function. 
and the homomorphism between the natural number algebras is just a function which preserves these elements and, and these, these end of functions. And we want to be able to talk about these homomorphisms in order to define what recursion is, because uh, basically recursion is given by in initiality. So, so the initiality in the category of algebras defines recursion, but we also want to talk about induction. And if we only have a category of algebras, then we can't really talk about induction. So let's extend category to a category with families, where the families provide the formal language to talk about induction. And uh, so we have a job, and the job is we have this theory of signatures on the left side, and we need to build a model such that every signature or a typing context is interpreted with a CWF of algebras. And from this thing, basically everything else follows, and then it becomes this, this pretty large model construction where types are in, interpreted with fiber CWS, substitutions, CWF morphisms, and so on, so on. Uh, universe is interpreted with the CWF of sets and EL with a discrete CWF formation. So you can see the details in the paper and the appendix and the formalization. So there are lots of details about this. And, uh, and this is partially formalized in Agda, but the entire construction is, is unformalizable in Agda, uh, if on, like for performance reasons, but also for like reasons of human possibility. And, uh, but once we are done, very nice results follow. So we can compute the notions of algebra, homomorphisms, recursion, induction, and do this in a completely exact way and not just up to some isomorphisms in these categories. So we can actually write a computer program such that it gets a signature as an input, then you push a button, then it prints out all the beta rules and the induction principles for a particular signature. And then we can also prove the equivalence of induction and unique recursion by very easy internal reasoning in the CWS. And we also get some, basically we, we, we get to know a lot of things about these algebras. And uh, in particular, we get to know that CWFs are modeled by any QIIT specifiable algebraic structure, and this can be useful when building models of type theories. So one question remains, so is there an initial algebra for, for each signature? And, and we use a term model construction to show that, yes, there is. And to give an idea, so consider the constructible T terms in the theory of signatures such that, so basically we have this, this context, which is basically just the context, uh, the signature of natural numbers. And then we have some T term in this context with a type Net. And because we can only build terms, in, we can only use inside T, zero and successor, exactly the natural numerals are constructible as terms in this, con in this context. And so we can also have equations in the context. And since we, we have equality reflection in this syntax of this type theory, then everything which is constructible in the context is already quotiented uh, by equality reflection and by the equations which are contained in the context. So basically everything gets, everything works out nicely if you just try to do this, these term models. So by these observations, we can construct the term models and also prove their, their initiality. And some remarks about these term models. So, so basically term models for closed qualities can be built from the theory of signatures, which is itself a closed quality. So then we can say that, that is, it is a universal closed QIT. So it's a closed QIT such that every other closed QIT can be constructed out from it. And, and uh, so this universal closed QIT is basically just a fragment of normal extensional type theory. So we can view this as a reduction of closed QITs to the syntax of extensional type theory. So basically, if you just want to talk about closed QITs, all you need is extensional type theory. And and I think this is, this is very interesting because uh, like the notions of models and syntaxes of dependent type theories are almost always definable as closed QIRTs. But if, so, and in parentheses, so if we have open QIRTs, then this is not quite as philosophically nice because we cannot reduce to a conventional extensional type theory, but we, 
we can only reduce to some non-conventional vari var variation of extensional type theory. Okay, and um, what future work is there? So we can generalize to large and infinite arcuities. And uh, infinite arcuities in particular are, are interesting because they give us some constructive choice principles, which are otherwise not available in type theory. And we can also generalize a higher induction, uh, which is very complicated. And, but I hope that the people working uh, in cubicle type theory, like the previous uh, speaker, maybe can, can, can do very useful work in this, in this direction. And, but in order to make this practical, we need to, we need to integrate these qualities into some type theory with computing transports. So either cubicle type theory or maybe some observational type theory or some set truncated version of cubicle type theory because we can, can just postulate these qualities and add them to Martin Love type theory because then evaluation gets stuck on these quotient constructors and everything becomes completely unusable. And uh, so basically, this was the content of my talk. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. We have um, like five minutes for questions. Uh, there was this uh, question already asked, uh, which is now gone from Slido. Uh, so this was this reduced product question, but um, maybe, yes, please. Um. So is there a way to derive your category of um, algebra as, as a, some kind of category of algebra from a functor, some kind of functor derived from the signature? Um, I'm so, sorry? So is there a way to map a signature to some kind of functor whose category of algebra would be the category of algebra you construct? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, uh, what the question is about? In the language, you have multiple different data types. And they all live together in the same space, whereas in your work, every data type gets their own little categories, which seem to live in different worlds. And maybe we can talk about this uh, after. The... Right, there's a question, um, Daniel Gretzer on Slido. Yeah. Uh, can you compare uh, quotient inductive, inductive types to the logical framework? To the logical framework? I mean, uh, from, the, from the point of perspective of formalizing, uh, Type theories. Uh, I'm not sure because I'm not extremely familiar with the logical frameworks, but I think that so so I, I think that there are some limitations in the logical framework approach when trying to formalize the dependent types, and basically the, the limitations are very similar to what we usually have. So this I think this set weight hell is probably not avoided in that way. Okay, okay. Yes. So you, you refer to the analogy, the extensionalist principle in your, your time theory. Uh, does, does this have any kind of consequence on, on the creation of the monstrous uh, things, uh, monstrous uh, functions in the system? So you mentioned that you thought you would be able Okay, so, so it's, a, it's a good observation. So because I have listed an equality reflection rule in the syntax of theory of signatures. And the reason was that when I'm doing these term models, I need to be able to automatically quotient everything. And I can do that by equality reflection. But of course, there are some problems with this because then you cannot write a type checker for your signature because you have undecidable type checking. But this is not a fundamental limitation because you can say, okay, let's just have a theory of signatures without equality reflection, then compile it down to the other representation and say that I have the semantics in the equality reflection representation and write a type checker for the decidable theory. So, so I only left out this because this is not really essential to the 
current presentation. So you can basically solve these computational issues. Uh, can you describe that non-conventional thing a bit? Uh, you said something non-conventional extensional type theory for the open case. Okay, so, so, so basically, if you have open QIITs, then you, in the syntax of signatures, you have some construction which, which kind of includes types from the meta theory into signatures. So then it's basically a large QIIT because you have sets from the meta theory into your syntax. And that's a non conservative extension of, uh, of extensional type theory. And because we are building the term models basically in the same, in like, likewise, we build the term models in the theory of signatures, but the theory of signatures has these non unconventional kind of inclusions from the meta theory into the syntax. Uh, we have time for one more question. Neil? Uh, um, on, this was a very nice talk, thank you. Um, so on, on one of your slides, you talked about giving the model construction for the QIITs and interpreting the universe by sets. And then a little bit later, you talked about the meta theory being uh, extensional type theory. Like are there, like, like what kind of properties do you need to interpret the universe? Uh, so, so the meta theory, so I haven't really talked about the meta theory in this talk. So my remark was about you can reduce QIITs to a syntax of a particular extension or type theory. But the meta theory, so in the meta theory, we require a function extensionality and uniqueness of identity. So you could as well say that the meta theory is also just extension or type theory. Okay, thanks.